Well, staying in Libya and the death of an Eritrean teenager in a Tripoli detention camp this week has highlighted the plight of more than 40,000 Africans living in makeshift centres. Most have been detained while attempting to flee violence and search for a new life in Europe. But aid agencies say conditions in Tripoli camps are appalling. Tony Birdley visited one detention centre near the Libyan capital. Driven by poverty or pushed by fear and persecution, either way most migrants escaping their homeland, mostly in sub-Saharan Africa, end up here on the coast of North Africa. Libya can be the start of a bright new life or the beginning of a nightmare. In the capital Tripoli, thousands wait each day for the chance of manual work. The money they earn is used on a Mediterranean crossing to Europe, sent back to their families or to buy food. They come with a dream but the reality of life here is far from idyllic. I came here to make money. It's better than staying in your own country because here your mind is more free. But now there isn't work like before. You sometimes don't even have enough to eat. They won't openly say they want to go to Europe. That would provoke arrest. But most, not all, want to. Joshua made that crossing and spent six years in Europe before being deported from Austria last year. His dream was to become a rap artist, but he found only hardship and difficulty in Europe. I can make money even better than the people that live in abroad. So I decided to work my money to earn my capital and go back to my country and establish my talent because I'm a good musician. But you can tell from the drained faces that optimism among many African migrants is in short supply. These African workers do the jobs that Libyans don't want to do. They earn just a few dollars a day, but it's still more than they can earn in their own countries. They often live in basic, deprived conditions, but even so, in some respects, they are the lucky ones. These migrants are some of the estimated 40,000 detained in Libya. Most were arrested trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea to Europe. At this centre in Zawiya, west of Tripoli, there are almost 500 detainees, some of whom have been held for four years. Many have applied for political asylum or settlement in Europe. It's a place of bad living conditions and broken dreams. 16-year-old Adal de Bretzion escaped political persecution in Eritrea with a dream of a new life. His life ended in a detention centre in Tripoli when he died in mysterious circumstances. Aid organisations say that getting explanations and access to migrant centres isn't easy. It is a sovereign state and um, we, are, we can advocate to uh, improve the conditions, close the centers and find alternatives to this approach. But uh, in the state that uh, the country is in right now, it's, uh, it's a very, very difficult undertaking. The cash-strapped internationally recognized Libyan government says it's doing its best under the circumstances but can't adequately help its own people who've been displaced in the conflict, let alone migrants. That's no comfort to Alalad, who is from Nigeria. She's been in detention for nearly four years. Three of her five children have been born in centers and she's been caught trying to reach Europe four times. My kids, they have gone through a lot of risk. They have gone through crises, um, uh, airstrikes. They have gone through the risk on the sea. They have gone through tortures. And that makes me, I'm not proud of myself. Um, I'm ashamed of myself because I kept on asking myself, why have I brought them to this world? But the migrants have learned to cope with hardship and limited choices. They've had to. The so-called crossing season with calmer seas in the Mediterranean is approaching and many will be making the choice of either sticking with what they have or gambling on a dangerous voyage and the unknown prospects in a Europe which is not as welcoming as it once was. Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Tripoli.